Well, my grandpa moved his family here in 1946 into Camas Valley, and uh, him and his boys logged until they moved off to other occupations over the years. Or Logging is in the blood of this branch of the Dancer family. Both sides of my family were lo in logging, and I went to work in 1975 for myself, a company from one shovel and a skitter into uh, what I have today, which is quite a bit more equipment, quite a bit more responsibility. Pete Jr. and Eric Dancer understand the connection their dad feels to the logging industry. And so do Pete's grandsons, Brad and Ryan, all make a living in what is a generational bond. Got my forestry degree and I, um, you know, I wanted to do something in forestry. I didn't know it was logging at the time. And so I became a forester for a private landowner. Did that for three or four years and decided, you know, this wasn't what I wanted to do forever. And I have a family business my brother's in and you know someday it'd be great to continue that you know family business with him and so i came back uh, i think a year year ago today is when i came back and so what he came back to is a family business that is much more than a paycheck it's a way of life a chance to prove yourself topped off with respect for those who paved the way that's logging in a nutshell In 1991, the Spotted Owl Crisis put the brakes on a lot of logging in the Northwest. Pete Dancer took a huge risk. Load up everything on a barge and sail it halfway across the world off of a, a gamble that it's going to work out with four kids at home? I mean, that's, that's a gamble that nobody alive is willing to take anymore. Dancer took his logging operation to New Zealand for a few years and it worked out. But he wanted to come back to Oregon, his home. My grandpa and the balls that that guy has over the course of time to do the things that he's done and the places that he's been, it's just, it's, it's unheard of today. Forestry is the, is the main crop grown in Oregon. And people don't think of it as a, as a crop. They think of it as uh, something obscene. And when we go out and make a clear cut or we go out and harvest timber, that uh, we're just destroying the environment. And that's just not true. The dancers feel good about what they do, but even more importantly, they know the way they do it is right. This industry gets a bad rap, but I think there's so much emotion and misinformation. I think if, if people were more educated on what we're doing and the renewability of this resource and, and the demand, and you know, we do it better here than a lot of places in the world. We have to utilize it or we'll lose it. People don't realize that in everyday life, their house, there's their uh, toilet paper, their products in their life, toothpaste has wood fiber in it. You just have to have that renewable resource available to you. The biggest misconception is that we're about out of trees. You know, we're out here cutting all, the last few trees and I look around and, you know, come, anybody that's of that opinion, come on up and we'll go for a drive. We have plenty of trees for this generation and uh, every generation going forward. In the last 45 years that I've had a logging company, it's really changed. Of course, that costs a million bucks, too. And uh, the newer yarders, if you buy a brand new one, they're two million bucks. So it's not, uh, it's not something you invest in without having a, a pretty good plan for making it pay. We used to have professional managers running the BLM and the Forest Service and the private land and they knew how to manage timber and make it a productive crop and grow it and regrow it. Uh, we don't have that anymore. We have a court system with judges and lawyers that are making decisions which they know nothing about. Our forest health has suffered tremendously from that. New rules coming out in 2024 will greatly impact the forest products industry and consumers. Dancer says there's always a curveball, always something to work around. The road building is going to have to change. Uh, expenses are going to be up because the, the logging is going to be more difficult. The road building is going to be more difficult. And, and, and it just boils down to the boards are going to be more expensive to have to pay for that uptick in price. The general public doesn't see all the planning, preparation, and detail that goes into replanting a forest. You know, this is a renewable resource that uh, a lot of people don't uh, think of it as a renewable resource. They think of it as, uh, you know, 
would cut it and it's never going to be the same kind of resource when in fact that's not true. We're not killing the trees, we're harvesting the crop. The trees that we plant are going to continue to take in carbon and store carbon. In 50 years there'll be somebody out here, because this isn't the first time that this has been logged. You know, you look around, the second time this has been logged, so hopefully there's a third time and a fourth time. Eric was part of a nationwide group that studied carbon inputs and outputs in regards to wood products. These trees we're harvesting today, they're going to get turned into a, a some sort of a wood product that's going to store carbon for 30 years. And while that's being stored, the next generation's come up and it's absorbing more. And really, we're the only uh, building industry, building materials industry that can, that can make that claim. Steel can't say that, concrete can't say that. The dancers, like most loggers, are committed to proper forest management. They love Oregon. They love the forest, the outdoors. And the thing they would never do is harm it. So it's a common misperception that you know, we want to destroy the woods and when in fact we're out here, we know more about and care more about the woods than most people, you know, environmentalists do. I don't want to see these streams get wrecked. I, I, I fish, I hunt. I mean, uh, we like to think that we're as good as stewards as the forest as anybody. Um, but sometimes these rules, uh, they can get almost on the point of, of extreme, I think, so. Generational loggers are not unusual in Oregon. History has a way of repeating itself. For that, Pete Dancer is thankful. And yeah, now I'm at the age that I want to turn that responsibility over to my sons and let them have at it. They got a good foundation under them, so. Well, the hours suck and, and it's hard work and why do you even want to do it? And I, I can't really explain it to you. It's just, it's just one of those things that you, you kind of look forward to the new challenge that each job brings. My grandsons that are working out here will continue it on as long as there's uh, trees to log. He did it, did well, still doing well. So uh, if I can be a part of that, nothing more, I can be more proud to be doing. And if I could get my boy to do it someday, I'd be, it would be the greatest thing ever, but I'm never gonna force it on him.